Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy Phil Shocker, the 19th Jog here with our draft recap of the. What is the. JDL. I'm recording this for the third time. I'll explain that in a second. But if you guys can, hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to join the Phil Shocker crew today because you'd be brilliant with the game of the crew. So, I didn't get to some of the explanation. Also, sorry for the noise in the background, okay? It's just gonna be how like that it is, alright? But, sorry for the loud clap and the cat that's meowing. He's trying to get attention from me. So, I had a ring, I had a one team plan, but then my plan got sniped so badly, and then I changed it up. Then I redid the draft analysis, and whenever you're doing the redraft analysis for the sec the official team, I looked back at the dock because I was something. And then I was an idiot and forgot something. So, real quick, let's go over this. So the original team was literally a rain team plus Melman. It was going to be a rain team plus Trick Room with Hatterene. It was going to be so dope. I just did not take Hatterene when I should have had. And then Lady took it when I should have. If I had taken it when I took it, I would have been golden. But then Lady took it from me. And that really ruined. So I decided, you know what? We're going to scrap rain. I want to go somewhere. Get a different route, kind of build, semi-fast offensive, but mostly like kind of like trick room based. Kind of. And I went and changed up this team. So the original team you see here was Melmetal, Bear, Scooter, King Drop, Polito, Rotom Key, Seismitoad, Ludicolo, Umbreon, Call for Grigas, Noctowl, and Gengar. So, made transactions. But there was one transaction I forgot to change. Call for Grigas will be on my team for week one. Not Aromatis, because I forgot to take Coferigus off the team, because what happened was I automatically assumed Aromatis was already on my team. And from doing a head planning, I messed myself up completely. So, I can't have Aromatis for this week one team builder that you'll see later on this week or so. And you're going to see that, oh my god, I messed up so badly by not having Aromatis for week one. But... Let's go over the team that we will be having for the rest of the season. So my was the fourth pick in the draft, which was basically the middle, which sucked. But I knew this Pokemon could easily make it back to me if it really wanted to. And I had to scoop it up when I had the chance. I knew I could have picked it for round two, especially with eight cards in draft. But I wanted to make sure I secured this Pokemon. I went with Melmetal, a.k.a. Nuts and Bolt. Also, I might rush for this team really quick just because I don't want to record, have it, mess this, record this again. But basically, Mel Metal, Choice Band Abuser. Really good versatility, actually, a little bit to be a little careful. Like, there's always just some little tech sets with T Wave Toxic. There's Acid Armor Body Press sets. There's, like, obviously, like, again, Darkest Lariat, which is really good because it goes through any type of setup variations that there could be. So, a lot of good things that uh, go from that as well. So, just a lot of good utility for uh, Mel Metal there. Um, up next, with a second pick. Um, you need to grab a really good Melmetal answer, and this is the only bet. Break. My cat just bit me. Sorry. You said uh, push him away there. But uh, I went with the best Melmetal answer, and I want to make sure no one can beat me with it. Uh, I went with. Well, okay, I'm going to stay this right now. I'm going to do this draft basically up from the tiers to the G Max and stuff like that, and then go over what I actually got for three points. So basically, my tier one was Melmetal, my tier two. When, after doing the transactions, was uh, Rotom Heat. Rotom Heat I have used extensively, so we're not going to talk too much. But I can arguably say this is probably my favorite Rotom form, because I've just been semi-more successful with it. Though I haven't really tried Wash, and I've only tried Mo one time. I still want to try those out again. And I've just now tried Rotom Spook, but I haven't used it. And I've used Rotom Frost, and I liked Rotom Frost, but... I haven't really tried, but Rotom Heat has been one of my most successful ones. I mean, I picked up a 6 cell for God's sake, on one matchup. And with the one league I'm doing, it's actually been really clutch for us, so, yeah. With my first tier 3 pick, I went with Froggers, a.k.a. Seismitoad. I actually had Polytoad that named it Poggers, so I would have won that, but I didn't like that. But I went with Seismitoad. The reason why I kept Seismitoad on the team, uh, well, so I'm basically telling you guys what I kept and what I didn't drop. Uh, I kept uh, Seismitoad because of the fact that Seismitoad is a really good defensive mod. One week is in grass, you're going to see that this team covers grass really well, and covers electric really well as well. So I got some good uh, diversity and defensive typing to handle and typing that we're going to 
maybe struggle with, not fully. But Sun Toad, great Pokemon. I could still run like Mono Rain Dance if I want to use a physical. Weapon. Poison Touch plus Water Absorb is huge on this Pokemon. This Pokemon actually just really just doesn't get to do gets to do some so much, doing just so little. Okay, so I barely get to Pokemon. It's a good Rock Setter as well, so he does give me that as well. And just overall, it's a really good Pokemon. Now, for week one, I'm going to say it again, so no one thinks I'm cheating here. I have to use Copperigus. Grace period had ended, so I cannot use Perfume this week. Next week, from week two all the way to week seven, I will be allowed to use Perfume. But basically, I picked up Perfume is because of Trick Room and Wish Support, which is really good in this game. But from as a Trick Room wanted to use a Abuser Setter for Melmetal which can be really, really, really good in the right situation, in the right currency. But I'm not going to do it too much because I have used it a little bit, and I've talked about it pretty extensively as well. For my GMAX pick, I made this my last pick. So basically, I got GMAX, and this was regardless of nothing else because I was the last to pick my GMAX. I basically got GMAX Gengar as the last pick overall. But again, I want to reiterate this as I have not said that we can only hold a Pokeball on our GMAXs. If there was held items that you can use on any of them, Oh, 100% this would not have lasted towards me. Believe me on that. But, um, Gengar is phenomenal. Give me a chance to really get a chance to set up a nasty fly, or just go for offensive pressure at Red Gate. He's really good in speed tier as well, and just in overall, just a very good Pokemon. Up next is my second tier 3, which Perfume is by the way my tier 4. Uh, midnight tier, the Umbreon. I have never really used Umbreon at all. Um, Umbreon in itself is just a really good Pokemon. It can play a physically defensive role. It's primarily a special wall, but primarily I think it's got access to Roar, it's got access to Toxic, it's got access to a movie, some tricks are here. It can even be a Calm Mind Setter or a Curse Setter. There's really some unique ways to run Umbreon, and I'm hoping to be creative like I was with Mandibuzz. So, now going into my Tier 5 pick. My Tier 5 is Hoop the Noctowl, and I'm not going to really talk about this thing because it would have been a hurricane because when I decided to keep it on the team just because, you know... Tainted Lens is cool. Access to Agility, Baton Pass, or anything like that. Does it get Baton Pass? I need to look at that real quick. And it does not. Okay, never mind. But um, it's a good, it gives me a Defogger, which I really, really need with this team as well. So now I have two Defoggers on this team. And it's, it's semi-defensive. It's okay. I went with Celebi, actually, as I went for my train. So my free picks, um, my first free pick of transactions is Celebi. Uh, I went with Celebi because it was another rocker. It gave me an de easy defensive grass and psychic type. It was also a really good offensive mod as well, that actually has a nasty plot and some TV drain. And I think it may get access to some of the new moves, who knows? But overall, Celebi is a great mod. Also, a fantastic scatter absorb as well, especially for things like Toxic, Will O Wisp, and then Naturally Cure Out and everything like that. Just a really good mod to have right there. Up next, the return of Obo, my brother, the Snorlax. And Snorlax is slightly not as good as it was. Or Gen 8, I mean, well, during Gen 8, but it's still a fantastic mod. Immunity is so clutch on this Pokemon, and it's just, in general, just a massive threat. And it can just be really, really annoying for so many people that have to prep for and fight, because there's still curse sets that can be very deadly. Facade is so crazy to have to be looking out for when it comes to a mod like Snorlax. I'm really excited to try Snorlax, because I've been really wanting to use them again. Up next, we've got Leg Hulk. The return from Season 1, I believe... And uh, I went with it because uh, I need a really good offensive Pokemon, and I wanted some more Hazard Control, so I got Rapid Spin. Again, Hazard Spin, uh, the bump with Hazard Spin, Razor, bleh, Rapid Spin with a Speed Boost is really, really good. It's really just a generally good Pokemon to have as well. With Curse, with like a Curse, Wider Stab, Bulk of, um, Normal Gen, or something like that. It's just generally a really good Pokemon, and it's not that bad, it's still good, and I think you need to have a good fighting type, and... Right, and this game gives me, like, priority. And my last Pokemon is Esmeralda. The return of Esmeralda. Those will remember the APA Indigo Season 2 run I had. Um, but yeah, um, the main reason I used this thing was because of Prankster. Prankster is really good for T-Wave, Thunder, T-Wave, will o Toxic, Recover, just a general nuisance test. It's not the bulkiest thing in the world, but it's just a really annoying utility mod that can really just buy so much of an annoying thing. Because he does force people to prep for still, regardless. But that's going to be the team, guys. Hopefully we can pick up our championship. We made semifinals last time. First time, final, the final second time, it's time for the championship. But I'm going to head out, guys. Until next time, guys, I'm Phil Shark. I'm going to